All right, y'all, we're going to get into this video. TikToker beats her daughter to death. What the fuck? And makes TikTok dance videos weeks later without giving a damn. All right, let's get into this video. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell so you can be notified when I upload on my channel. DM me. At the time of life, day, 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 let me know what I should be reacting to next. And tell a friend, tell a friend, today ain't your mama, today ain't Uncle Joey, still a hoe. Let's get right into this video, man. Let's get it. Mum, daughter, smiles and dances is what Nicola and three-year-old KDG Priest would present to the world on TikTok. A normal mother and daughter having a laugh through the pandemic tried to make most of what time they had together during lockdown. Once the cameras turned off, however, a grim reality away from the smiles would soon begin. How could you kill your own, kill your own seed, bro? Like what? Mmm, I got sneeze. Ah. What am I watching, y'all? What's going on? Damn, they, they got cameras everywhere on the premises. Hold on. Bruh, like, <laughs> they got full surveillance on these niggas. Okay, they back, they back. Little walk in the park. Hold on. Oh, I'm going to say where she at. Mm. Yeah, P.O. We did all of this surveillance for no reason, y'all. We done went outside, back inside, ain't shit happened. What you've just witnessed is Kaylee Jade's last day out at the park before she would go on to be killed in her home by either her own mother, her mother's boyfriend, or both of them. Hmm? She'd been subjected to months of horrific abuse previous to this, and in that clip itself, oh, police baby. would come out to say, that visible bruising it could be seen and untreated bone fractures were present. But what? let's have a bit of a deep dive into this case and see what exactly went down on that summer's evening in the Kinghurst area of Birmingham. On the morning of the 9th of August 2020, emergency services had been called to Kingshurst House in Stonebridge Crescent. When both paramedics and police arrived at the scene, they found Kaylee laying lifeless in her room and she would go on to be pronounced dead at around 11.25am. The first responders said something didn't feel right about this situation because a three-year-old girl with no underlying health conditions had just been found deceased by her mother and there was visible bruising. So they decided to call detectives to the scene. Once they'd been called over, Nicola would go on to be arrested so police could get her account of what exactly went down. And she was treated as a suspect because she couldn't explain what had happened to Kaylee. Mm. Police would let her go though, presumably on bail, and then a series of TikToks had been made. A tribute TikTok was posted with the caption, R.I.P. my baby. Ten days later on the 17th, she can be seen crying and lip syncing the lyrics to the song, To My Parents. The lyrics go, I'm sorry, mum and dad, I know I messed up bad, should have, should have done better, I'm sorry, mum and dad. Mm -hmm. This is more than likely a crocodile tear appeal, though, to her parents to say that she should have been a better mother. Four days later, another tribute post was made to Kaylee with the caption, I love you so much, darling, mummy will never forget you ever, R.I.P. Angel. But then only one day later, the social media narcissist would post a TikTok Fast. dance challenge video with the caption, way too serious, laughing face, 
dancing always. So going. basically, her little baby that she's supposed to adore so much, and it's so sad that she lost. She doesn't care that she just lost her little girl, basically. Because you're already back to shaking that ass, dancing, and doing these TikTok videos, bro. What mother who truly cares about their daughter or son comes back so quickly on TikTok after losing their child? TikTok will be the last thing. Social media in general will be the last thing that would be on my mind. The last thing that I would even be worried about, y'all. That's crazy. One day later on the 23rd, it's she crazy. posted this video with the caption, Love my makeup purchase, everything goes perfect. That would be the last video uploaded to her TikTok account, so we can presume a short while after this, the police would she have got finished their investigation, and Nicola and her boyfriend at the time, Callum Redfern, were charged with you look like you might beat your ass. Kaylee's murder. You see, the investigation had been opened after the results of the forensic post-mortem. If that girl was only with these two people, that girl got harmed by one or both of these people, which is sad as fuck, okay? And even if it wasn't the daughter directly and it was the boyfriend, your job as a nurturer and a protector of your child should be to make sure that that child is not in harm's way. All right, no matter who you're dating, whatever the case may be, you need to protect your child at all costs and you failed. You fucking failed and then you went back doing TikTok videos like everything was A-OK. -okay. All right, pick her motherfucking ass up, man. She got something to do with this. Revealed that Kaylee suffered a number of significant injuries to her chest and abdomen area. She had also suffered severe internal injuries during an assault. That is On sad as fuck. As having small tears to the brain and a punctured lung. This was the result of heavy blows, possibly kicks or stamps, and what? a punch, or a very hard slap to the head. Some of her injuries showed signs You gotta be really psychologically damaged, like really fucked up in the head, y'all, to beat a child like it's an adult. To beat a child like it's your enemy, you know? Like... This is crazy, man, you know, and I don't know, y'all. ...and were dated back two weeks before her death, suggesting she had been a victim of physical abuse before. The injuries that, that caused her death were described as something similar you'd see as if she had been involved in a road traffic collision. That, on top of other evidence, oh, including what? CCTV, would secure the charge that was brought against the pair. You see, the CCTV... You be want to slap the fuck out of these niggas through the damn screen. <laughs> Just slap the fuck out of these niggas through the screen, bro. The TV showed that both Nicola and Callum were present at the flat. The CCTV footage that you seen at the start of the video took place on the 7th. Of course, they did leave the flat, but they came back, and after that, they didn't leave. Callum turned up on the 8th with a friend and would go on to leave at some point later, but police said that the time frame that Callum was present is when the assault took place and ultimately Kaylee died, so the pair were charged. Both would go on to deny the murder charge, the lesser charge of manslaughter, allowing the death of a child and child cruelty, so a trial was held at Birmingham Crown Court in June of 2021. In court, it was heard that Kaylee had been subjected to a brutal assault at some point on the 8th of August 2020, but didn't die straight away. Mm. It's thought that if she'd been taken to hospital for treatment, there was a very good chance that she could have survived. So basically, y'all beat her to a pulp, all right? She was still alive, guys, to suffer and then to die, y'all. But by the time Nicola rang for emergency services, she was already dead. The prosecution said that the catalyst to Kaylee's death may have been Kaylee interrupting Nicola and Callum after they were noted as spending, quote, time alone together in the bedroom. Now, although both of them were on trial for Kaylee's murder, they both tried to pin it on each other. Talking of the previous of history of abuse, Nicola would say that on one previous occasion, she recalls hearing Callum punch Kaylee 
and on the day in question, she says that she went for a cigarette while Callum was putting Kaylee to bed. Within the time that she said she was gone to smoke the cigarette, she went on to say that Callum had smacked Kaylee for biting him while he was helping her put her pajamas on. Although there were probably bit your ass because you've been abusive to her. Was no visible bite marks on his hand. Callum would try and pin it Lying on Nicola in police interviews, but ultimately he never gave evidence in court. But witness statements would give an insight to how Nicola behaved around her daughter. Take the testimony from her ex-boyfriend's mother, for example. Nicola had lived with her back in 2018. The mother would go on to say that at first, Nicola would call Kaylee a rat and a bitch, but as time progressed, she would give her, quote, the odd smack with an open hand what? on her arms and legs. A 17-year-old also gave evidence in court who sometimes helped Nicola babysit. She told the court that one month prior to Kaylee's death, Nicola slapped her daughter around the head twice in anger. The first time was because she asked for food. Look at that beautiful little girl, bruh. Because she asked for food, you smacked her in the head, bro? The second was because she placed a blanket over her baby brother's face. What is the world court, coming to? Callum's friend would go on to give evidence. Remember, this is the friend who turned up at the flat with Callum on the day of the attack. He would go on to say that he didn't see any violence take place and that, quote, the normal routine went down. But he did go on to say that after wanting to leave the property for quite some time and Callum not wanting to leave, out of nowhere, in a hurry, he said that he did want to leave and so they left. The court was told of how Kaylee's room wasn't the best living conditions for a small child. There was no carpet, the mattress was dirty, and when mm. paramedics entered the room to check to see what was happening, they couldn't turn the light on because there was no bulb. But although the prosecution couldn't pinpoint who exactly was to blame for the death of Kaylee, Messages would show Bofa. that both were just Bofa. as guilty as each other. In a text message exchange between the pair on the 24th of July 2020, so just slightly prior to Kaylee's death, Nicola would go on to say, quote, I'm going to kill her because she keeps leaving the living room or going into the kitchen. So I've hit her and smacked her for shitting in her nappy. Callum responded, For being a kid. Give her one from me. To which Nicola said, I will, babe. You know what? These are sad ass adults who are really just kids who haven't grown the fuck up yet, y'all, and who are stuck in whatever trauma they went through when they were a kid. All right. Maybe they were beat. Maybe they're just acting out exactly what happened to them, you know, and they think that that shit's normal. Bro, it's just sad, y'all. It's sad because a lot of this shit just becomes a cycle, you know, and it happens over and over and over again. And it's like a generational curse, you know. But somewhere along the lines, you just hope that one person is bold enough to be different, you know, to do something different, to not want to be like their parents and change, you know, and break the generational curse. Three days later, Cullum messaged Nicola saying, I'm going to keep that little brat away from me, sick of your spunking daughter. But after a trial at Birmingham Crown Court, both were cleared of murder, but were found guilty on the lesser charge of manslaughter. And Nicola was also found. So what's the difference, y'all? Hold on. And guilty of child neglect in relation to Kaylee's past injuries. For this, Nicola was handed a 15-year jail sentence, and Callum was handed a 14-year jail sentence. But once again, another story of how a parent has gone on to kill their own child. We have been going over some similar stories over these past few weeks. But the one person who Kaylee relied on to protect her ultimately would say. be the one she needed protecting from. Oh, I mean, even I Nicola's said. own mother had contacted social services to tell them about the abuse that was going on. But it's unclear if any action had been taken. Nicholas probably not, because they probably were able to cover that shit up well. My girlfriend works for social services. And they take shit like that very, very serious. So possibly they did a great cover up or whatever the case may be, or maybe they just had, you know, social workers that just weren't on their shit, okay? Um, that's sad, man. Daughter in the hopes of seeing justice for Kaylee. I'm unsure why a mother would go on to abuse and kill her own child though. 
someone she carried for nine months, just to ultimately put them through months of abuse, which resulted in lots of injuries, including 19 fractures to the ribs. I just don't understand how you could do that to anyone, let alone a child, right. and that child being your own child. Child didn't do anything. And instead of going out your way to put your daughter first, it Facts. seems like you just wanted to abuse her and put a man first. Sad as Instead hell, of bro. buying Katie what she needed, a decent room, a decent mattress and food, Nicola, believe it or not, saved £900 out of her universal credit money for people who don't live in the UK or aren't aware of what universal credit is. It's basically welfare money from the government. And she used this money to buy Callum a car. But the thing is, Callum didn't even care for Nicola because on top of what he'd been saying about using Nicola for sex, he took the £900 and pocketed 300 of that because the car only cost £600. Well, give the video a like for more crime relief. All right, uh, y'all let me know how y'all feel in the comment section down below. I looked up what the difference between manslaughter and murder was, and they said the difference is ba uh, the, the difference between the two is based on the mindset of the killer at the time of the crime. While murder refers to the malicious killing of another person, manslaughter refers to either unintentional, uh, unintentional <laughs> or non-premeditated death. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense, all right? And who knows really what it was? You know, who knows if it was premeditated or not. To me, it sounded like it could be premeditated and it could be murder, guys. And the reason why I say that is because they said they saw a text message of somebody saying, I'm going to kill her, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And she ended up dead on your watch. Okay. So I don't know, man. All I know is that's a sad story. I feel for, you know, the, the family. I can't even say the family because the mother did this to her own child but the family who actually does give a fuck about this little girl you know i really do feel for them and what a shame that like the dude said imagine the person that's supposed to protect you you feel like you need protection from bro. that's got to be heartbreaking my heart goes out to that little girl she's went back into eternal love unconditional love guys so I can't say that it's all bad, and I can say that, that that little girl no longer has to suffer. So I'm glad to hear that. To me, they deserve life, protecting that little child who did nothing to anyone but try to love people, okay, um, out of this world before it was her time, all right? Anyway, guys, y'all let me know how y'all feel in the comment section down below. Very, very sad story. I love y'all. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell so you be notified when I upload on my channel. Make sure you DM me at the Diamond Life 888. Let me know what I should be reacting to next. And tell a friend, tell a friend today. Ain't your mom today. Uncle Joey still a hoe. I will see you guys in the next motherfucking video. I love y'all, man. Peace. And we out, baby.